lets you expand and kind of play a longer game is suddenly so much better that obviously becomes very intriguing. So, uh, let's get into it. In the top right corner, we're going to start off with the Red Pearls player, Legend of StarCraft 2, of course. It is Haas. And down here in the bottom left corner of Dynasty, we're looking at none other than Nanami's main Nexus. Do we have to uh, discuss map pronunciations again, uh, Wardy? Is it Dynasty or Dynasty? I feel like we say Dynasty all the time now. Yeah, I know, but, but like, you know, I, I found that some... Since, yeah, since you're from, from the UK, you know, wouldn't yeah, you but, say Dynasty? Well, you know, at least these ones are just like, hey, you pronounce it this way and I pronounce it that way. Not like, none of us know how to pronounce it, so we're just going to make it up from the start, right? <laughs> <Fair>. <laughs> just, you don't say ZVZ either, right? So I guess, yeah, yeah we, we, could, we could call it Dynasty, it's fine. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> so many people actually get annoyed for me for when I say Maru. Because they're like, it's not Maru, it's Maru. Maru. And I'm like, no, it's Maru. <laughs> like, that's just how I say it. And they're like, you're so wrong. And I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Like, I just, I just, yeah, now sometimes I say Maru just to, like, appease them, like, once every, like, ten times I say it, I'm like, Maru. I really make an emphasis. Fair on enough. This, so. Here we go, though. Mapu already highlighting that golden, that golden natural expansion. It's very exposed, however. It looks like Nanami has decided that he doesn't really want to take that expo, not just yet, but he's making it look to Haas as if he did take that expansion, or at the very least that he may be planning on it, because he did wall himself in fully. Haas is going to start looking around the right side of the map. Sadly for him, that's the wrong angle. That's the wrong angle. Yeah, it's uh, going to be uh, a little bit of a miss in that regard. We obviously see the Cyber Core coming online. We're going to start seeing the units. Is Adepts here already? Out in Nanami. Look at that. Adepts, Proxy Twilight. We are on the way to DT. Surely that Twilight came down so quickly in the upper left-hand side. Mm -hmm. And the cheese is alive here in the PvP. Absolutely. Haas is looking around the bottom right corner of the map, but he can't find anything. And that's because, well, it's all the way at the 12 o'clock position. He may very well find it here eventually, and picking up on that would be massive. I guess it would also be possible to see if the opponent expended by going towards that golden mineral line. I mean, maybe it's not the highest priority. Either way, where are you going to go? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at least he could, you know, deny a scouting probe. <laughs> Beautiful. Are you right? I was like, where are you going? And he just he pops over the goal base. I said, you have the probe. He's going to spot it. And yep. Haas is going to know. This is huge as well because Haas is playing very much so a situation here where well, he sees a Twilight. He didn't see the Dark Shrine, but the assumption is there. You can go back and check. Haas only built a Twilight Council, so he was not looking to get detection up early. Haas does have to notice, though. Right? Yeah. Do something, has. He, he did not actually see the Dark Shrine itself. No. And when you're going into a Twilight Bro. Council, he actually just doubles down with Blink here. You don't have... So when you go Stargate or you go Robo, you have a form of detection. In this particular instance, you don't. So the Nami's plan is to try and warp in units over the other side of that golden wall to try and see if he can, well, send them into the opponent's base. This would be really surprising. He just plants down a Nexus and he does go for the Robo facility here eventually. But the Observer is going to have to come out quickly. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're just going to wall this off and buy a bit of time, this is probably going to be all right, you know? I'm worried because yeah. I was like, just wanted to make sure he was definitely respecting the idea that this could happen. He has very much so done that. This DT warping never happens in time. That is not a correct warping from Nanami. That's going to be nope. cancelled. That delays your DTs even further. And this is just looking to be a defense from Hass already. He hasn't even had to do anything yet. I mean, Nanami expands, but he's going to be so far behind on Blink. When Stalkers have an Observer with them and they can just Blink around the map and harass and move about, they're going to have the time of their lives. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Hess is uh, ready to, to send it here in just a moment. He's going to have, well, pretty much a full minute, maybe even a minute and a half or so, where his opponent won't have that upgrade. So he's going to have full map control for quite a while. Nanami did take the faster expansion, I guess, by ever so slight margin. So maybe he's going to be able to figure out that he can shut it down. But finding this pylon would be nice for him. It looks like it's not going to be the case. There is a prism coming on the back of this too. I'd really like to see uh, Haas move across the map right now because he does have Blink finishing. Yeah, I'm kind of with you, right? Just, I mean, he's got Blink. He's going to have the detection. I think at this time you just go and put some pressure on. This is where your advantage would lie from having denied those DTs. Haas is actually down in workers. So, like, it is somewhat important that he gets going. Mm -hmm. He's got the prison coming up, so I expect this is going to happen uh, very shortly. And there is, of course, a little threat where it's like, well, I don't want to be completely undefended if something shows up in my base because you do still have that Dark Shrine available. 
But uh, yeah, I think you've just got to leave a couple units at home if that's your concern and just send it because sticking around back at home just ain't yeah. it right now. He could even, if he's really concerned about that, just go after that tech, right? But sitting completely at home would be a bit of a misstep. Now he does go across the map, though. But like you said, the worker count is looking really good right now for Nanami. Plus, those are golden minerals he's bringing back. So his income is not bad whatsoever. Problem is, at this point, he doesn't have Blink until right now. Okay, well, both players are going to be able to start that dance. Has does have the larger unit count, right? So that is one of the advantages. Decides to go across that mineral wall. And I think just like that, there's a whole lot of problems right here for Nanami. The very least, that worker count is going to be reduced a little. So far, not entirely game over yet. We have two observers scouting each other. That's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. You do shut down the pile on this other side once again. Stalkers are still trading on the bottom side of the map also, so we will just continue to see these Stalkers trading with other Stalkers. I was going to see the Super Battery popping in this way. Haas just steps back for a moment. He will maintain an army supply lead here. That's the thing, right? You know, he's already mm -hmm. ahead on army supply. They're both on equal numbers of gateways. Okay, has it down a couple of workers, but it's not like Nanami's been mining super cleanly because he's had to pull workers away a couple times over. So in theory, Haas should still at some point be able to overwhelm. The only thing is, a lot of Haas's stalkers are getting low on HP, so it's kind of difficult to keep them in the fights long enough before they have to blink away to keep themselves alive. That may be what Nanami is hanging on to right now as we're not quite able to break through onto that gold base just yet. Yeah, and Nanami is also really making a lot of shield batteries. Battery overcharge is going to be available again too in just a moment. Those probes just awkwardly in the middle of this fight returning resources, but they really need to because that's the only way that Nanami could ever come back into this. Now that arc though, that concave here, very good as well for Haas. And I think ultimately he will be able to get a very significant advantage out of this, but it is not going very smoothly so far. No, I kind of expected this might be looking a little bit easier, a little bit, uh, you know, smoother. But uh, yeah, apparently not the case. I mean, Has still has the army supply lead. He's just down on workers. He's going to lose a few more now as well as this gold base gets hit again. So he will lose a couple there. And now still keep the pressure up on this other side where Konami genuinely, I mean, a worker advantage given time. He is genuinely going to have something a little bit favorable for himself. So progress is being made. And now he is hanging on for now. You were so excited about that sentry buff, Wardy. Yeah. We haven't gotten you, any you, sentries you know in this particular it, game yet. You, you know what it is? Actually, I'm not surprised because Pass is not the kind of player to kind of like be like, you know what? Yeah. There's this new cool way to expand and play macro. Like, okay, let's utilize that. Um, it may be in Europe a bit later on. We'll see the new sentry in a bit more kind of uh, royalty. <laughs> Because right now it's not. Manami actually anyway. doubling down, by the way, going into the uh, Dark Templar blink right now. He's been trying to warp Dark Templar into his opponent's natural multiple times. Has never been able to really make value out of that. So he decides to go into the Shadow's Trite research. Takes a while. It's quite expensive, but it looks like this game isn't quite over yet. And like you've been saying, he had the worker advantage a long time ago. I mean, right now it's finally been evened up and it's slightly in favor of Haas. But really, for like the first, I mean. Yeah, maybe four minutes of this fight going on. Nanami has had a bigger economy, so it really does add up over the course of this game. He's he's actually just stabilizing here. Yeah, no, he really is. Stalker's gonna blink at one another there as we come back through, and we'll just be seeing a couple more Stalkers warped in. I mean, the problem for Haas has really just been getting into a fight, because you can't really just blink yeah. across into this, but then you can't really sit behind this and kind of trade equally either, right? So it's a little bit of a dodgy one. There's a few more Stalkers get walked in. Haas just going to keep this position, but hey, Blink DTs are about to be on the map, and they can cause some trouble. Let's see how well they can do as Haas does come in there, and this trade actually looks a little bit better. He's getting a couple of the kills, even. Yeah, the concave is just massive here, right? Just the surface area right here on those red Stalkers really does help out. Now we do have the Blink available, but I mean, I kind of feel like you can fight that if you're really concerned about those Blink Stalkers. But anyways, apparently we're going to try and see if we can go up that ramp. The Adept's already softening up the pylon a little bit. They're distracting it, and ultimately, there we go. We go across the mineral wall. He was uh, a little indecisive. Haas has been winning this fight with the Stalkers for a long while, but he, like you said, he can't really commit to a massive blink over that wall. He would just be in a, in a huge amount of trouble. Maybe he can still with a massive lead. He's actually just going to kill the CC, or, well, the Protal CC. Yeah, he's going to cut the Nexus. Maybe Haas can just go now. I mean, this is 64 to 38 army supply, and a bunch of the army supply on the other side of the map is in DTs, remember? So that was an investment. As we do get in, we kill the Nexus, and the DTs get out. This is why you've just got to go. We're going to lose our pylon there and then lose power to those gateways. So I think mm -hmm. Haas, like I say, just... I think it's rough, because if he blinks in, he knows a lot of his units are low HP, so blinking in is not exactly great. 
I don't see what other he options you really have. Yeah, you just gotta go because you've yeah, at the very least you're down an X right now. Here we go, we blink in, but some of the stalkers get stuck, so it's not quite gonna be the fight that has once. He's gonna move downwards, gonna wanna get his other stalkers in here ASAP, but yeah, this is not it at all. I mean that's why he was afraid of it. It was not gonna be a pretty fight, but his hand was kind of forced, man. Only 17 workers remain right now. Make it 16, 15. He's losing even more at home. Got natural expansion is a remade, so at the very least, Haas is gonna okay be able to shut down that War Prism too, and he is gonna be able to get some decent income here again in a moment. But Nanami is now basically more than doubling his opponent's economy, which is massive. Haas was thinking about going around the site with his massive army. He's got all those stalkers, but he hasn't really been able to get a lot of value out of them. I mean, he's been trying, he's been trading cost efficiently, but Nanami, after his Dark Templar opener, completely fell flat on his face. He's doubled down, and he somehow made. A game out of this somehow some way i mean he is up in workers his army supply is looking good enough has only just now gets his gold base back online okay nanami was not mining from the gold the entire time because of has's position but you know so what at this stage as has comes around with these stalkers <laughs> going to move back through the center and yeah absolutely we are 100 percent back into this game as nanami which is something quite incredible yeah insane i don't think this was really uh the original plan that probe has been stuck for a long time i was thinking maybe blink across and target fire down the pylons shut down those shield batteries asap but when the blue stalkers take up this much space just their physical existence on the map it makes it difficult for those stalkers in red to get across the wall off so in a weird way standing your your, your ground in this like well uh, technically inferior position on that left side of the wall it's it's making it difficult for has to really be aggressive i mean i don't think you want to clump up your stalkers like that though that is gonna create more service area than you need but now has is in a weird position where yeah he still technically has more army units than his opponent but just barely and very soon nanami is going to be able to well bring the fight to him yeah i mean nanami's not far away from actually just moving out and about himself right i mean what's missing for nanami Perhaps a prism if he actually wants to be on the map. He had that once upon a time, but that got cleaned up while harassing. So, no, he's uh, he's looking good. He's the one that's still adding the probe here and there as well. So that in you know additional income is still very much to play. And he still has the DT that can just blink across here and try and cause some trouble. Okay, <laughs> the stalkers and the knobs, but you can still grab a couple of probes at least. I'm surprised he didn't just send it in and write a couple of workers down. <laughs> Mop Mapu's making a good point there. Actually, the mineral wall is starting to run out, so we actually have a. Uh... An opening right now with those mineral fields being completely depleted. Dark Templar, of course, can be used as well in this fight if they really want to. There's one observer remaining for Haas on this side of the map at the very least. So if Nanami can snipe the opponent's observer, then suddenly, I mean, he needs his observer to be in range. But then suddenly the Dark Templar can be really forcing the issue too. Man, those shield batteries, I actually thought he was getting a little carried away making that many of them. But they've been so valuable. Now, Hass is just constantly trying here, but he I think he's gonna bleed out over the next couple minutes He needs to get something done. and needs to do it soon And even though it's been a Nami with his back against the wall this entire time. I Yeah, I'm very impressed with the way he's managed to recover this Yep, oh, he's doesn't... trying to get the observer. Yeah, he wants to get oh. it so bad oh, Almost and again. The obvious just forces this back right as well. Oh, stalkers don't do that. That's a gift oh. Couple going down there from the Nami is Hass still just about maintains the army supply lead throughout this and they continue to trade out over in this position. And we'll just see one more still again. This is a Haas game, all right, uh, Mar uh, This is just such a Haas game right now. Even if you haven't seen him play in a little bit, it is just so funky. The man likes to play these crazy matches, but I think this one is not really meant to be. He brought a, a sentry, too, so we do ultimately get one. Madness. I mean, this is... Uh, Nanami just can't leave his base, though. I mean, trying to do this is not working for him at all. I mean, he's just gifting so many stalkers walking through this choke. Just back up. Just just chill. What, do what you were doing already, you know? Yeah. He's trying his best, but I, I I don't really see how there's a lot of longevity. Now, he has been rebuilding his work account, by the way. So, once upon a time, he had less workers in his game than he started the map off with. But he's climbed back up to 21. There's going to be that weird moment where Nanami is actually going to be oversaturating his bases because he is running out of cash and Haas still has some more money remaining in these golden mineral fields. Now suddenly though, the Dark Templar numbers here are big enough to just start <laughs> fighting the Stalker straight up. There's also an opening, by the way, in this wall off too, so I didn't even really need to blink across. Yeah, I think he just wanted to... going after the Nexus. I think he just wanted to blink on top of the Stalker's ASAP as now we actually have the recall coming through. Shot that was just a moment too late. If Yobbs comes across, we can do uh, a little bit of a killing on that. 
As Hass gets away, 10 army supplies still in the lead. As now actually we do get a catch though, he went the wrong way for a moment, which means Nanami is able to kill off a few units and he is able to take a little bit more of an edge for himself. And maybe that's all Nanami needs. And now army supplies even out and Nanami comes to the middle of the map. And this is where Hass's oh. units, all being in yeah. the red health, may have an effect as well. Oh, oh he also decides to donate one of his own stalkers. There are two Hass. There's just simply not enough units in blue here to really properly fight this. What a Absolutely silly nice. game. In the meantime, the Dark Templar are going to town. There's a warp prism desperately trying to help out, but that warp in was not fast enough in the end. I mean, that was like a double warp in here with the fast prism as well as that pylon. Dark Templar, they'll blink. They use their Shadow Stride ability to get towards that low ground, and now they find a couple stalkers, okay? They just hugged them for a moment before, well, turning their blades against them. Nanami going to the front. Supply count is actually surprisingly even. Yeah, no, I, that's what's had me the whole time. It's like, I feel as though the numbers should not have been as kind of, you know, close as they have been. Ooh. Because Nanami should have been able to overtake. And now Nanami just gifts away a bunch of units as Hass is going to try and re-expand. The DTs are going to say no to that. So Hass just isn't allowed this base, but there's not even that many minerals left on this base. At what point no. do you just give up on it? He recalls the uh, Dark Templar right now, and some of them do manage to go back home. I think he managed to get three of them out. All right, there is an observer there, so at the very least, Haas has confirmation that they did indeed go all the way back home. At some point, one of these guys is going to have to take another base, which is, you know, if this if this goes on for long enough, we need to make a new expansion. I mean, I guess Haas is retaking that, well, golden mineral line, but can you really go anywhere else? And I'm at 25 probes on, like, two mineral fields. It's, it's all very suboptimal. Yep, this is not exactly... Uh... Looking too hot at all <laughs> across oh, the board. Oh, we get the prism. prism. Prism is actually so costly yeah. at this point. I mean, that's very expensive. You you barely have minerals. Your main base is mined out. The gold is not mining at all. Like this is a genuinely like an economy issue for Hass, as he's going to be in a base trade now. Because what other silly thing could we add to this game than starting to base <laughs> trade it out? Seventeen and a half oh. minutes deep. We're going to recall though. Hass feels like he's in a worse base trading position. I mean, I feel like Hass is the he's guy that has structures. to go. No. I mean, I yeah, guess Yeah, he has so. less structure, so he needs to do something. There's a Nexus now being proxied in the top left and corner too by Nanami, which is quite clever. But I think if he's going to do that, he needs to get out of his opponent's main base. Uh, some of the Stalkers here do manage to go down there in the end. Dark Templar kill whatever they can. Because yeah, so obviously if you do a base race here, I think Hass was looking at it. He's like, wait a second, I really only have one base. My opponent has two. I've got so many of those shield batteries that have been bothering me for a long time to kill. I guess I need to go back home and... Well, save my expansion. Right now, though, Hassa's army is looking massive compared to Nanami, but he's going up against Nanami who has a hidden nexus, and that base can actually be incredibly valuable. He's yeah. only got six probes. I mean, that's, yeah. why, that's why I kind of thought Hass was in a bit of a checkmate situation because he was having to recall home because he's going to lose the base raid is not great because Nanami, in theory, had the eco advantage of the extra bases, but you're right, only six probes. Maybe it doesn't matter that much. As, uh, yeah, Hassa's army is once again huge, but he's terrified of the counterattacks, and right, rightly so. The fact that Nanami still has access to those DTs as well is also a pretty big deal, so I can only imagine that that is also going to be a factor. Yeah, I suggested at the very start when Blink first finished for Haas that he should maybe go and shut down that Dark Shrine. I think in hindsight, that's probably what he would have rather done as well, because he could have just picked it off when he first finished the Blink upgrade. There was nothing out for Nanami on the map, and it was, well, two structures there for free. I still think at that point he would have been in a comfortable position with a small advantage, but he decided to make the game a little crazy. I also didn't really think that this Stalker fight for Nanami, though, at the Golden Wall here was gonna go as well as it ultimately did it was so funky now has actually sees this probe where is this probe going it doesn't really make a lot of sense is it going to do a proxy are we making another nexus now there's another probe and a third as well that's a clear indicator to has that there is indeed a base out there somewhere and that those probes are being rallied across the map so this is an indicator to him that he needs to move out and that's what he does Yep, gonna get a move on. He is 20 army supply up, so he's gonna be good to move out as well. He catches a bunch of the Stalkers here as well, right? That's just a big win. Gets the double obs too. He's already got Stalkers top left, in fact, so he's found this GG. base, and apparently that will do it. Haas will take the GG. Haas will get himself the victory here. Uh, how exactly, honestly, I'm still not quite sure, but uh, <laughs> one heck of a game to say the very least, if nothing else, as Haas takes the 1-0 lead.
That was a crazy game. Yeah, if you haven't seen a lot of games yet on the new patch, look, the new multiplayer balance patch is nice and all. It's some quality of life improvements. In this matchup, the center change certainly is significant, but the new maps have been really fun, at least for me personally, to watch games on and to cast them. It's been... It's been a blast. I mean, you can't really do this on, uh, well, for example, Alcyone, which is going to be our next game in this series. You don't really have a map feature like that, and the creativity that it forces is just, yeah, really, really enjoyable. I really didn't think, though, that that defense was going to be manageable for Haas, or sorry, for Nanami in that previous game, because Haas had the bigger stalker numbers, and he had the service area advantage, right? Because he had more space to maneuver those stalkers around in, and ultimately, that usually, at least, means that you're gonna win the fight but nanami just using those battery overcharges and those like i think he made like a half dozen batteries there in the natural expansion eventually <sighs> he somehow managed to stabilize there got an advantage and then well i still managed to squeeze out a win but that was a that was a really dynamic match it was just straight up bonkers like, i mean it really just didn't quite play the way i thought it was going to at any point and then Somehow, I, I think at the end of the day, Nanami really had so many moments where he just gifted so many Stalkers. I mean, I can't get over the yeah. fact he just bled Stalkers through that narrow choke point. He lost like six, seven Stalkers there. That is absolutely mm -hmm. enough to have made the uh, to made the difference. So, I think that's one of those things which you got to kind of look at as well and just be like, like, what the heck did we really just witness? This really was something a bit ridiculous. Um, a lot of mistakes, yeah. honestly, but uh, that's the fun. I, I think Asia. Nanami bleeding out, like, he, he must have bled out, like, at least a dozen stalkers throughout that game, right? Like, there were multiple engagements where the fights just went slightly better for Haas, and that... Well, if he had, like, imagine him having, like, ten more stalkers near the end of that game, it would have looked very different. Yep. Absolutely is, uh... Let me just wait for... This next uh, game looks as though we're just gonna change VPNs and stuff for a couple moments, so it'll just be a few minutes. We get this one to way get into our second round of our second series. As, uh, yeah, we're in the middle of Asia, which is typically a, ma uh, a region, I should say, which I always feel like is very interesting. It always has these kind of weird series and stuff, so it's almost not surprising to see the first PvP of Asia already becoming a bit of a fiesta. Um, but uh, yeah, just in general, we've got fun matches in this region of Day Max at Coffee I'm looking forward to. I think Cyan Silky could be very fun as well. It's just across mm -hmm. the board, a lot of fun matches to come. As we have, again, 12 best of threes in total. One down, one and a half down, 11, well, 10 and a half to go. We'll be here for a while is basically what it comes down to. Yeah, so What's funny though is sure that like going know. into that... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I am just saying, making sure people know we're going to be here a while, you know, like... Yeah, just yeah, guarantee. yeah, don't go anywhere. Just put us on your second monitor, whatever you need to do, just stay the entire day. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. What's interesting to me though is that Haas wasn't the one that made that game you know, that crazy. It was Nanami who opened up with the proxy Dark Templar, and that ultimately is what led this, uh, yeah, very strange game. Haas was actually opening up a relatively normal, especially for his standard. Yeah, no, the, the actual opening was pretty, pretty normal. To be fair, over the last two, three years, Haas has gone from being this crazier player to this much more like, yeah. hey, I'm just going to play fairly normal builds and rely more so on my micro and things. Um, and, and I feel like you know, a while back we were being like, oh, why is Haas doing? But like, nowadays it really is. That is just more normal, everyday kind of Haas, right? Like, that is more so yeah. what he just does day in and day out. So, yeah, in that regard, I'm kind of not surprised. But it's still weird because, like, we've grown up and learned to realize that, hey, Haas is a name where you expect him to proxy. You expect him to be crazy and all the rest of it, right? So, the interest as we get ourselves going into game number two here. Haas and Anami coming up right now. Indeed, our best of three series continues. Both players are ready. Let's find out. All right, we're going to get this one underway. As we set this up and get this going. And we'll kick off into round number two. All right. Uh, in the top right-hand side, this is going to be our red Protoss player. This is Haas. And his opponent, all the way in the opposite corner of the map, it's Nanami. Are we going to proxy something this time around? I mean, it is Protoss versus Protoss in the end, right? So you can definitely open up with a more macro-focused style. No low-ground expos or anything like that here for these two players. Only a handful of players really seem to be super comfortable playing that particular style in this matchup, but... 
Of course, this doesn't necessarily mean that everything is going to be super normal. Haas definitely has normalized his playstyle quite a bit. Right? I remember those days back when, I want to say this was like 2017, when he made it to the finals against Serral, I believe, at the time. Or maybe it was 2018. It's been a while. But anyways, just crazy stuff all around. These days, he does play some more normal strategies. And well, in that previous game, he didn't really do anything too wild, but he's still happy to bring it if he needs to. Well, we'll find out if he wants to here as we head into our signing. This is, again, one of the maps which we are more familiar with. There's still a potential to be a bit wild on our signing. While we see it as this more normal macro map nowadays, it still has a gold base, right? It still has, you know, locations mm -hmm. that can be kind of funky. It still is this kind of map where you have to unlock the bottom side of it by mining out some minerals. So those are all questions we can kind of look on over the next little bit. As we just have our probe scout. Yeah, the about. maps have actually changed quite a bit, right? Compared to like the last, I don't know, if you if you compare the maps that we have in 2024 to what we used to have in like 2022 or whatever, like we consider this to be a pretty normal map now, but this would have been a wild map. Like even just two, maybe three years ago, this would have been a pretty crazy one. The golden base and then that mineral wall you can mine out and the entire, well, bottom right in the corner of the map is just not accessible at the moment. It's, it's kind of fun. It's been... Uh, yeah, really creating some dynamic games, I think, and just overall it makes the game more strategic, which is good. Oh, absolutely. It's uh, going to be uh, fun to see all these new maps kind of looking uh, to be a little bit wilder and to kind of see what they get up to and what everything kind of becomes on them. Now, there's two stalkers, there's two stalkers here, and this is going to be a Stargate on the way from Nanami. You know, you're right, Loco. I was really excited about these sentries. We're not seeing them right now. <laughs> and we may just not see them at all in this first PvP of the day. No, they are a little bit uh, a little bit better, but they're still certainly quite fragile and expensive too, right? So margin for error is absolutely tiny. Usually being the aggressor in a game of StarCraft 2 just also feels a bit easier. So, yeah, I guess we have a little bit of a variation, though, as far as the strategies go. So Haas, once again, going into that Twilight Council, probably going to go into that Blink upgrade here momentarily, whereas Nanami is going to go into the Stargate. Yep, and that Stargate is going to be done in just a second, so we will have the option from that. Most likely an Oracle to start, and there it is, Oracle on the way out. So we get that on the go, we get this all beginning, and we look to see where we take things for the next little while, once we just have ourselves... Probe is still scouting around. Stalk right in the middle is going to go Nami's way. He has three against two. That is obviously a good number. Only one probe lost so far this game as Haas makes his way to play. What about four versus three, Wardy? Well, believe it or not, when you change the number advantage to the side, <laughs> the other side gets the advantage. <laughs> Expert analysis. That's why we hire Wardy. Only the best of the best. Well, that's why they hire you to set me up for this expert analysis. Would not have seen it without your uh, pointer. <laughs> well, Mapu really set us up for it. He zoomed out and he saw those stalkers waiting on the high ground. Honestly, it's a team effort here. Beautiful stuff. Uh, the way this game works then is obviously Nanami wants to contain Hass a little bit. He wants to make him afraid of the Oracle and try and utilize that Oracle and its map control to gain benefits, which Hass is going to be able to overwhelm generally because of his blink. You can't Careful. lose the Oracle. Because that just undoes everything I'm talking about. If this Oracle is not a threat, then you can just go across the map with Blink, and there is nothing for Nanami to stop Haas in that situation because his Blink is a mile away. Twilight Council is still not even done, so we are so far away from that. Do you see this oh. Oracle again deflected back over the left side for the moment? Yeah, these Oracles not achieving anything. There's one Stalker in the main base whose job it is right now to just shut down that one Oracle in the top right hand corner. There's one in the natural, I mean, but there's no probes. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem here for, ha or sorry, for Nanami, who's going to be under a lot of pressure in just a moment. Now, of course, that mineral wall has not been mined out yet, so Haas is going to have to use his blink cooldown just to get the stalkers in, and it does mean reinforcing this is all a little bit trickier, or I guess you could walk them around if he feels like that is the better approach. I mean, I, I figured we wanted to bring these units into the battle as quickly as possible, because the more time you give Nanami, the more it is going to, well, be more straightforward for him here to defend against it. There is one stasis ward to prevent a aggressive blink forward. That's nice and all. I think he's got enough here. Yep. Stasis wards just get placed. Stop Haas from being aggressive, which is what Haas's advantage is right now, having that blink already. And uh, yeah, this is all Haas can really do, kind of come in a little bit. The problem is you want to kind of get on top of these units so all your stalkers fire at once. You kill without the battery getting a chance to heal. But you can't really get that one-shot factor with the stasis wards there because your opponent will just make you walk into them and then you get trapped and then you're in a lot of trouble. So 
That's why Nanami is, you know, what he's doing is very much so correct. Has is so committed to this, by the way. Work account is not yeah. there for him to play a longer game, so he is needing to do something very, very soon. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. He hasn't made a worker here in like a minute, so he is essentially putting himself all in, or at the very least, he needs to deal significant amounts of damage. And so far, he's done nothing of the kind. I mean, Nanami is... Right now, about 50% more economy compared to his opponent. That just simply means that in the long run, he's going to be able to get more Stalkers. Yes, the Oracles, they're not really achieving a whole lot. Yes, the Blink upgrade is much later. But as long as Nanami just stays alive here and keeps warping in Stalkers, he should get the overwhelming numbers here eventually. Oh, oh that was that, cute, though. That was actually really good. <laughs> One Stalker takes down the double Stasis Ward, and that is going to allow you to, at the very least, poke in just a little bit extra. And at the end of the day, though, it's, it still needs to be kind of game-winning damage with the fact you're not building any workers at all, and you're not doing anything. I mean, the Stalkers of Nanami will continue to defend, and Haas has just walked himself into a corner that he can't seemingly get out of. As he continues to fight at the front, it looks like Nanami is looking better and better here in this game number two. I think that game one told us to maybe not call anything too soon in this matchup, but... I mean, <laughs> things really look good for Nanami, because he's also going to double down with getting some damage. Those Oracles hitting strong for a few workers as well. Yeah, 40 workers versus 21. I mean, Anami is still adding on shield batteries too. I think maybe he should go for an additional gateway or two instead, but he just is more than happy to defend here. He knows that Haas is going to have to shove all in, and that's exactly what we are watching right now. He's not breaking through the front door. Just like that, Nanami manages to even up the score. Just like that, where one and one, Nanami is going to bring it to a third game. So we're already getting a third game. You know it's been a, a thing in the past where sometimes on day one we have a lot of the two zeros and stuff, but mm -hmm. Nanami showing us that this PvP very much so is competitive. I think we saw that in game one when Nanami honestly had edges and just kind of, you know, let it slip a little bit as well. So we will uh, see how this all continues as we get more action coming in just a few moments. Get this ready to go once again. Yeah, absolutely. Both players ready to just jump into the lobby immediately and yeah. looks like our final game for this series is going to be on golden aura yeah golden aura to wrap it up a map where we actually uh can maybe see some interesting stuff i mean potential for a longer game even because again it's this bigger map all the map uh, all the bases are up a ramp as well so attacking in is always going to have that little bit of a difficulty attached to it of course it's pvp so there's a lot of ways in which the map jump ends early anyway but there's definitely some potential here for this game to maybe show us. I mean, I say longer. The first game was 17 minutes. It's just we never got off of mm -hmm. two bases until a proxy nexus at the very end. So we'll see how this goes. Game number three is readying up. Everyone is getting into this lobby. Go, goes. Readies are called. And it is Gold Nora to try and close out our second matchup of the day. It's actually so funny, though, because it wasn't even like a 17 minute long game, but we only had two expansions or I guess two yeah. bases for both players each. And then ultimately, the Nami took one more expansion there, but it was basically just an extended two base all in from both players. Normally, when you think of like a 17 minute game of StarCraft 2, it means that it was an epic macro game where maybe both players managed to go up to like at least five base, but not in this Protoss versus Protoss so far. All right, let's hop in game as we have ourselves down in the bottom right side this time around. It is going to be the Blue Protoss player from Mystery Gaming. It is Nanami. And his opponent in the top left-hand corner of Golden Aura, the man with a very cheesy reputation. We're looking at none other than Haas. Yeah. Almost forcing himself all in there in that previous game, right? Just not making any workers. He figured he just simply had the superior stalker numbers there, but I mean, shield batteries are pretty good, man. When you, when you have blink or not, I mean, you still have to ultimately kill your opponent's stalkers there, and he couldn't really get it done. Not get it done. I really feel as though uh, that's kind of been the problem for Haas, because he kind of in game one got a bunch of stalkers, felt like mm -hmm. he had a chance, couldn't get it done. And you feel like game two, you just didn't really get much of a chance at all. But let's see how this round uh, three goes. Can House bring it back, get a win. Of course, the way this format works, just a reminder, is Swiss. So essentially triple elimination. You lose three series and you're out. So day one's not the end of the world. Very likely your round two matchup. If you're an upset in day one, round two, it's like, okay, we'll actually probably have a matchup you can win against. Because someone else that lost out on day one. But man, it's just nice to get that first win and start progressing yourself forwards and closer to that playoff position. Because three wins and you're through to those playoffs, so it doesn't take a lot. Have a couple good matchups. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very nice. 
You're absolutely right. Hass has decided to plant his second pylon right now in the middle of the map. Doesn't necessarily mean cheese in this particular matchup. It just, well, makes the game a little bit more confusing for your opponent. Because what are the odds you're really going to be found there? But we'll have to see exactly what Hass does with that in just a moment. Cyber Cores, though, are finishing up. And, well, there's no unit even remotely close to that proxy pylon to really put down anything too aggressive. Nope. Nothing the third. Uh, too wild. Yeah. Let's have ourselves waiting for the, uh... Waiting for the tech, waiting for the gates. There it is, tech from Nanami. Twilight Council straight away, so he's going to go for that fast Twilight Council. Obviously in base this time. Pass with that panel on the map, but nothing nearby to build off of it. His tech's going to go down the main base as well. It's going to be Twilight on Twilight action. This time we're going to play something a little bit closer to a mirror from the very get-go. Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm fully expecting both players here to go into that good old Blink Stalker control. And we have been seeing that in game number one and two of this series, but the ways they got there were certainly very different. Scouting probe moving on over towards the bottom left -hand corner of the map too. I mean, I call it a scouting probe, but there are some juicy golden minerals down here. There are indeed. And a little the crap beetle too. The crap beetle got in these golden minerals. It does genuinely feel like Hass is about to drop this down. So yep. this is going to be a, a question of kind of playing all over and a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit hectically once again, I imagine. So we'll see how this uh, pans over the next few minutes. Obviously, that uh, bottom left base coming online, just something you have to figure out as an army and then decide, do I want to be aggressive against this? How aggressive am I going to be? I think he's set up decently. Like, yes, they both have blink at the same time, but that faster third gateway really does set you up to kind of get across and to go fight. Well, he is checking the watchtower right now. Or sorry, Haas here is checking the watchtower right now. Nanami, he passed by his location on the map. He decides to go for a proxy pylon. So even though he doesn't really know exactly what he's going up against, it is still very handy. We also have a proxy gate, by the way, going down right now with that second pylon that Haas put down in the middle of the map. He's also walled himself in fully at home. So oh, we have a proxy gate going down for Nanami. It's funny because neither player really realizes what the opponent is going for here. And the question is, who does this really favor, Wardy? Who does this really favor? I mean, I honestly, I think I love this for Nanami, no? I mean, Pass is just yeah. maybe having a Nexus that's not really going to have a lot of use. But Nanami has to strike quickly because if that gold base gets a recall to it and then the probes start mining there, well, then Haas will benefit from more economy. Then he will have a chance to kind of build a few more Stalkers, perhaps, or edge his opponent out. I just feel like Nanami should, in theory, have enough Stalkers right away to make something happen. It's really about finding that gold base, because if he finds that gold, he can do a lot. If not, he's attempting to push into a one base situation. Well, that's very defendable for Haas, so information is key. I mean, Nanami knows, so really it's kind of up to him to make the moves. I'm kind of surprised he does go across the map, actually. Yeah, he actually just used his blink as well to get into this fight as quickly as possible, so it wasn't cool down there at the very beginning. Now he finds out about this nexus in the bottom left and corner, though. And do you just completely switch? Do you only send your reinforcements in that direction? I think you have to address it. There's two stalkers. Okay, well, I think you guys should go after the probes. Yeah. There we go. He does indeed retarget them, because losing these workers is incredibly painful. Now Hass is going to have to send everything he's got towards the bottom left and corner of the map, too, if he wants to keep it all alive. Nice usage of the line of sight blockers there as well, which is going to give Nanami a pretty big advantage. Hass's reinforcements showing up, though, and those reinforcements are going to make the difference for now. And Nanami has to back away. And a chaotic uh, couple of moments here in this game as both players go one way, then the other. And like I guess, yeah, I think just in general, I would have liked Nanami to hit the bottom left harder to start off with. Because I feel like running up to the top just kind of invited Hass to have his units there. And now we're seeing this weird fight where Hass is going to be finding units all over the place. He's getting his reinforcements there because he's still getting <laughs> units off that gateway as well. And it's just a stalker fight. But Nanami is losing this fight. And that means Hass will defend the bottom left. And he's just up the base in general. GG is called. Because why wouldn't it end in a ridiculous way after the entire thing that we've seen so far?